Can we clear the main aisle, please? Okay, clear that get... main aisle, please. Sergeants, please clear if, that if, main aisle. If council members could please take their seats. If folks could take their seats, and if you're not staying for the state of meeting, if you could exit out into the rotunda, we are going to get started. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Vibrate. Will all non-council employees please leave the main floor of the chambers? Madam Public Advocate. Members, please take your seats. Visitors, if you're exiting, please exit now. Members, please take your seats. Members, please take your seat. And if we could close the door in the back, we'd greatly appreciate it. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Adam. Quiet in the chambers. Shh. Present. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Present. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Present. Jonai. Present. Gradenchik. Here. Holden. Okay, I got it. King. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Shemua. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Right. Yeah, Valone. Sure. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Torres. Here. Williams. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Here. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers. All rise for the invocation. All rise. The invocation will be delivered by Rabbi Shamul Butman, um, the director of the Lubavitch Youth Organization located at the worldwide headquarters of the Lubavitch community at 770 Eastern Parkway. Quiet in the chambers, please. Avinu Shabbat Shamayim, our Heavenly Father, please bestow your blessings upon all the members of the New York City Council. Bless them with good health, long life, prosperity, and happiness in all of their endeavors. Bless them for proclaiming 116 days of education in honor of the 116th day of the Rebbe, the Lubavitch Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem M. Schneerson. When the Rebbe spoke about education, the Rebbe speaks about the education of all children, the American child, the African child, the European child, the Mideastern child, the Far Eastern child, all the children of the world. The Rebbe always said 
that he wants the children to know that there is an eye that sees, there is an ear that hears, and that the world is not a jungle. You were elected by divine providence to represent all the people in the city of New York in all matters of peace, of justice, of freedom, and democracy. This is an election that Almighty God gave you because Almighty God felt that you have the whatever it takes. You have the responsibility to make sure that all of those laws are going to be instituted. As New York City is the leading city in the United States, your influence goes beyond the city and it reaches every part of the United States of America. And as the United States of America is a superpower, your influence reaches all four corners of the world. It is known among all four corners of the world that the leading city in the world is the great city, the city of New York. And parallel, of course, we have to say that with Jerusalem. The Lubavitch movement for the last 68 years has found its seat in this great city. And Lubavitch Chassidim, and we number, thank God, close to a half a million, all over, all over the world, have a special affinity for this great city, the city of New York. And for the last 68 years, the seat of the movement is right here in Brooklyn, part of the city of New York. In 1991, I was invited to open the United States Senate in Washington. Before that, I went to see the Rebbe. And the Rebbe said to me, take a pushka with you. A pushka is a charity box. And let everybody see what you are going to do. And let them know for what, sh what money should be used for. It is my honor and my privilege to do what the Rebbe asked me, to put in a dollar bill in which it says, in God we trust, in this pushka. We would like to invite you, dear members, after that, to participate with, the particip with one dollar. But I don't want you to get scared. This is not a fundraising effort. <laughs> if it would be, we would ask you for much more than a dollar. This is an effort to do more goodness and kindness. And we hope that you will participate with a dollar or less. Thank you so much. I want to tell you that in our shuls, in our synagogues, every Sabbath morning, we offer a prayer for you. We say, All those who serve the public faithfully as you do, we offer a special prayer for you, for your health, for your happiness, for your contentment, that you should be blessed with everything, with all the blessings in your communal lives as well as in your private lives. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Motion to spread the invocation, Councilmember Lori Cumbo. Thank you, Public Advocate Letitia James. Rabbi Shmuel Butman is the director of the Lubavitch Youth Organization, which directs Lubavitch outreach activities in the New York metropolitan area. With over 65 Chabad houses, Rabbi Boatman is also responsible for the world's largest menorah, which stands on Fifth Avenue during Hanukkah, and he delivers a very popular weekly lecture in both Hebrew and English every Shabbos evening. I want to thank you for being here today, for being a shining light in our community, for continuing to encourage us to do good deeds, and that every bit counts. We thank you for being here. I also want to acknowledge uh, Rabbi Hanina Sperling, who is also here of the Crown Heights JCC. And it is a pleasure to have so many of my residents here in City Hall with me today. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I would like to thank Rabbi Bootman for being here today and make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon this record. And I thank you for a most inspirational day. So moved. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much. Adoption of minutes, Councilmember Adams. Madam Public Advocate, 
I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of February 15th, 2018 be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> M, excuse me, M32, Executive Order 32 of 2018. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Re oh, go ahead. M33, Public Advocate Progress Report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M34, District Resource Statement. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M35, submitting Alfred C. Cerullo III for reappointment to the Planning Commission. I love Fred Cerullo, and we are referring that to the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M36 through M38, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, and I'd like to ask for a roll call vote on today's land use call-up calendar. May we have quiet in the chambers for a land use vote, please? Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Aye. Amprey Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye on all. Well, whatever. Uh, land use call-ups. Aye on all. Thank you. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Yes. Cabrera. Yes. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Si. Shh. Drum. I have permission to vote on general orders as well. Yes. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Espinel. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Vote aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. I vote aye on all land use call-ups and with permission, I would like to vote aye on all items on the general order calendar and resolutions. Yes. Thank you. Torres. Vote aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Quiet in the chambers, please, as we now hear from the speaker, Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I'd like to begin, as always, by remembering some brave individuals we recently lost who made an impact on our city, our nation, and our world. Uh, late last month, our nation lost a true heroine, Linda Brown. Linda Brown was at the center of the landmark case Brown versus the Board of Education, which ruled the end of racial segregation in American schools. Linda Brown's advocacy changed race relations forever, and her legacy lives on, though we still know we have a lot of work to do on segregations in our schools still. In addition, the world lost a great leader in Winnie Mandela, wife of Nelson Mandela for 38 years. She was known as the mother of the nation due to her independent role in the fight against apartheid in South Africa. She tragically died on April 2nd in Johannesburg at the age of 81. Her life is being celebrated today 
in a memorial service in Soweto and around the world, and she will be deeply missed. Tragedy struck us at home as well. Last week, George Stab, a DOT worker, was struck and killed by a car along the Hutchinson River Parkway. And we send our thoughts and prayers to George's family, friends, and everyone at DOT, and we thank him for his service to our city. We also mourn the passing of Stephen Levecci, an MTA bus helper who was killed in the line of duty. Stephen devoted his career to the MTA and the millions of New Yorkers who rely on public transit each day. Our condolences are with Stephen's family and friends, the MTA, and Transport Workers Union Local 100. And last but absolutely not least, we honor the 9-11 first responders we recently lost, and it seems like we do this every stated meeting, reading the names of people that we're losing because of 9-11 related illnesses. Lieutenant William Wanser, Detective Pedro Esponda, and retired firefighter George Froelich. These heroes succumbed to 9-11 related illnesses in late March, and our thoughts and prayers are with their families, friends, the NYPD, and the FDNY. Let us take a moment of silence in their honor if folks could please rise. All rise. Thank you. So before we begin with today's agenda, I would like to acknowledge a few members of our fabulous central staff here at the City Council who are leaving us. Last week, we bid farewell to our communications director, Robin Levine, a longtime fixture in the press office here at City Hall. Robin rose through the ranks from press officer to, press to, to deputy press secretary, to press secretary, to communications director, and she worked under three speakers, speakers Quinn, Mark Verrito, and myself. Now she is the chief communications officer at the New York City Housing Authority, and we're confident that her communications prowess that has marked her tenure here at the council will be put to great use at NYCHA. Today we are bidding farewell to two of our great attorneys, in the Legislative Division, Annie Decker and Deepa Ambakar. Annie has headed up the bill drafting unit since its inception in 2014. Since that time, she has made enormous progress in improving the Council's training and professional development curriculum. We thank her for her service, and we wish her well on her move to Chicago. Deepa Ambakar came to the Council after working for over two years at a private firm, and before that, seven years serving as a public defender at the Legal Aid Society. Woo! We congratulate Deepa on the birth of her daughter, Uma, this January, and we wish her luck as she moves on to serve as an interim civil court judge appointed by Mayor de Blasio this spring. Congratulations to Robin, Deepa, Annie, on the next chapters of their career, we wish them well and we thank them for their service to the city, the amazing women of the New York City Council. We really want to congratulate them. A big round of applause for all that they could stand up. There's Annie in the back. Where's Deepa? Is Deepa here? Annie. Do you know how hard it is to be the head of the bill drafting unit? How annoying we are to Annie Decker on a regular basis, and she did it with uh, a level of calmness and professionalism and thoughtfulness, and she did a tremendous job for us. So Annie, we're really, really grateful to your service uh, to this council. So I wanna uh, jump into our docket for today. Today, the council will be voting on two budget modifications. The expense budget modification MN6, is going to transfer $970.3 million between various units of appropriation in the current fiscal year, fiscal year 2018, with a zero net effect on the budget. 
the revenue budget modification MN7 is going to recognize $783.8 million in new revenues in the current fiscal year, fiscal year 2018. These new revenues combined with other funds for a total of $2.58 billion will be added to the budget stabilization account to prepay debt service for fiscal year 2019, which begins on July 1st. The Council will also vote on a number of land use items today, and here are some of the highlights. Uh, Gowanus Canal CSO facility. The Council will vote to approve an application by DEP to construct combined sewer overflow facilities to reduce the volume of untreated wastewater entering the Gowanus Canal. This project is located in Councilmember Steve Levin's district. West 127th Street supportive housing. The Council will vote to approve a set of applications to build 117 units of affordable and supportive housing with on-site supportive services. I'm really, really, really happy we're doing this. We need more supportive housing in the city of New York. That is how we're gonna get out of this homelessness crisis. The project is located in Council Member Bill Perkins' district. Taxi and Limousine Commission office lease. The council will vote on a motion to file the application to remove it from the council's calendar after it was withdrawn. This is in Council Member Fernando Cabrera's district. Uh, moving on, the Council will vote on a number of critical pieces of legislation today. First, the Council will vote on Introduction 754, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Espinal, which adds two additional members to the Nightlife Advisory Board, increasing the total number of members from 12 to 14. I want to thank the staff who worked on this. I want to thank uh, Balkis, and I apologize if I get your last name correctly. I will get it eventually. Uh, Miharig, kind of? Yes, uh, Leah uh, Skirpiak and Andrew Wilbur. I want to thank the staff who worked on that uh, bill. Next, the council will vote an introduction 241B sponsored by public advocate Letitia James, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer and myself, which this is a big deal. It's going to establish a new charter revision commission to draft a new or revised charter. The commission would have appointees from a wide array of city elected officials, including the mayor, all five borough presidents, the public advocate, and the controller, as well as, of course, appointees from the council. The commission created by this bill would not have a predetermined set of issues to consider, but would instead be empowered to examine broader questions of the structure of New York City government. I want to thank, I want to thank David Seitzer, uh, Kelly Taylor, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, and Zachary Harris, all here on the staff in the legislative division. And lastly, the council is taking a major step today in protecting all, especially women in the workplace with the Stop Sexual Harassment in New York City Act. With the Me Too and Time's Up movements, we have seen that women are forces to be reckoned with and they have made their voices loud and clear on this issue, demanding that enough is enough. The beginning, and this is the beginning, hopefully of the end, starts here in New York City with this comprehensive, forward-thinking package of bills. All New Yorkers are entitled to safe, respectful workplaces. And this package of legislation sends a strong message to the public, to, to, public, to, the, to the city government, and private employers that there is no place for sexual harassment in our city. I want to thank my council colleagues for their support in pushing this package of bills forward and leading the charge here in New York City. I am going to uh, run through these bills quickly. Before I do that, I want, again want to thank uh, the chair of the Committee on Women, uh, Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, for her tremendous leadership on this package of bills, not just the last three months, but over her four plus years in the body. She was a pit bull on negotiating these bills, strengthening them, amending them, and making sure they were the best they could be. Two of her bills are in here, but I really want to give her a tremendous amount of thanks for her leadership on this. Okay, so we're going to run through these. My bill, Introduction 612A, would require city agencies, as well as the Office of the Borough President, Comptroller, and Public Advocate to conduct annual anti-sexual harassment training of all employees. Introduction 613A, sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams, would require city agencies, as well again as the Office of the Borough Presidents, Comptroller and Public Advocate,
to conduct ongoing assessments of risk factors associated with sexual harassment at such agency in order to help provide a fair and safe work environment for city workers. Introduction 614A, sponsored by Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel, would require the New York City Commission on Human Rights to conspicuously post on its website resources about sexual harassment, including an explanation that sexual harassment is a form of unlawful discrimination under local law. Introduction 630A, sponsored by Council Members Robert Cornegie and Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, would require all employers in the city to conspicuously display an anti-sexual harassment rights and responsibility poster designed by the Commission on Human Rights. This poster would be designed to use in simple and understandable terms. Introduction 632A, sponsored by Council Member and Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and Public Advocate Letitia James, would require all private employers in the city, and this is, this is a big one, it will require all private employers in the city with 15 or more employees to conduct annual anti-sexual harassment interactive training for all employees of that employer, including interns and supervisory and managerial personnel after 90 days of being hired. Employers may use computer online training programs to satisfy the requirements of this bill. Introduction 653A, sponsored by member, council members Mark Levine, Jumani Williams, Richie Torres, and Fernando Cabrera would require city agencies as well again as the offices of the borough presidents, controller, and the public advocate to annually report on incidences of workplace sexual harassment within city agencies to DCAS, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services. Introduction 657A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, would amend the New York City Human Rights Law to apply provisions related to gender-based discrimination to all employers, regardless of the size, regardless of the number of employees that that employer uh, provides uh, jobs to. Introduction 660A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera, would amend the policy statement for the New York City Human Rights Law to expressly include sexual harassment as a form of discrimination that the New York City Human Rights Commission uh, would have the power to eliminate and prevent. Again, Chair Helen Rosenthal, our Chair of the Committee on Women, has two bills up for vote today. Introduction 663A would amend the New York City Human Rights Law to increase the statute of limitations for filing harassment claims based on unwelcome conduct that intimidates, interferes with, oppresses, threatens, humiliates, or degrades a person based on such a person's gender, from one year to three years from the time that alleged uh, harassment occurred. Let me say that again. In the past, people only had one year to file a claim. This is a big deal. It moves it from one year to three years so that victims of sexual harassment can file a claim and get the justice that they seek. Councilmember Rosenthal also has a bill, Introduction 664A, it would require city agencies, again, as well as the Office of the Borough Presidents, Comptroller, and the Public Advocate to conduct climate surveys to assess the general awareness and knowledge, <coughs> excuse me, of the city's equal employment opportunity policy, including but not limited to sexual harassment policies and prevention at all city agencies. Introduction 693. Sponsored by Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, which this is a very creative, thoughtful, smart bill. All of them are, but this was, a, a, I'm really glad that he thought of this. It would require that contractors and subcontractors that apply for city contracts include their employment practices, policies, and procedures as they relate to preventing and addressing sexual harassment in the employment report required of proposed contractors and subcontractors. We are gonna get a lot of information from all the folks that contract and subcontract with the City of New York. And uh, finally, Resolution 222, sponsored by Council Member Danique Miller, calls upon Congress and the President to sign Senate Bill 2203 and House Resolution 2734, known as the Ending Forced Arbitration of Sexual Harassment Act of 2017, which prohibits a pre-dispute arbitration agreement from being valid or enforceable 
if it requires arbitration of a sex discrimination dispute related to sexual harassment or any type of other discrimination related to sex or gender. A lot of people worked on these bills. I want to thank the staff. Aminta Kilowan, Malcolm Butehorn, Brenda McKinney, Daniel Krupp, Balkis Marig, Sheila Johnson, Andrea Vasquez, and Tirza Nasser. I also want to thank Jeff Baker for his tremendous work, Laura Popa for her work, Rob Newman for his work, and the entire division who worked very, very hard on this. And here in the Council, on the Committee of Rules, Privileges, and Elections, chaired by Council Member and Chair Karen Kozlowitz, this morning we voted to amend the rules of this City Council. This resolution, again, would amend the Council's policies and practices to align with the slate of anti-sexual harassment bills that we are passing today. If we're going to pass this and require it for agencies or the public advocate or the controller or the borough presidents, we ourselves here at the Council will abide by all the same laws that we are passing here today. I want to thank the Council to the Rules Committee, Elizabeth Guzman, for her work on this rules change in the Council. And with that, that completes the highlights of our docket, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. I just want to finally say I'm really, really, really proud that the first major package of bills, 11 bills that we're passing here today, and a resolution and a rules change, is related to sexual harassment. We have seen this in the media on almost a daily basis. We've seen and heard of the toll that it takes on victims, predominantly women, all across this country. And as some council members said at the pre-stated press conference, we know that this happens in city government. We know it happens at agencies across the city, and we have to take a real stark look in the mirror to get the data, to understand how invidious it is across city government, and also mandate new requirements of private employers as well. So I am tremendously grateful to, again, Chair Rosenthal and to all the women in the council for their leadership on this, and the men of the council who have stood up as well, and I look forward to us passing this today. And with that, I turn it back to the public advocate. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. Discussion of general orders beginning with Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to say that I want to thank this body for the work that we're doing. And in that packet of M30 and Reso 297, there's a very important piece that's there. And you may have heard that the decision came down for the criminal trial that was being held in the case of the person accused of the attempted murder of Michaela Capers, and in fact, the, made of, the murder of Prince Joshua Avito. And the family received a, favor, a favorable verdict. He was found guilty. So that's a bittersweet piece to this whole case. But I want to thank the council working with the mayor's side to come up with the ability to resolve getting that money in place because we will now have a Prince Joshua Avito Community Center. It's done, it's completed, it's beautiful. It's got all kinds of, uh, I've been told it has a college gymnasium space, which is different from other kinds of space. There are computer rooms there, there are social rooms, there are computer rooms, there's a um, sound room that's going to be there. It's a beautiful space, and it's dedicated to Prince Joshua Avito. So I want to just thank this body. I want to thank the speaker and the staff that worked on making this a reality because it was very, very important to me and to the community. So we'll let you know when they're going to have the grand opening and we'll invite all of you to be there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Council Member Koo. Thank you, Madam uh, Public Speaker. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the speaker and my colleagues on the budget response uh, we issued yesterday. There are a number of important issues highlighted in this year's response, and I'd like to highlight two that I think are particularly relevant. One is the lead for the city to invest in additional capital funds to reduce combined sewage overflows in our water. 
Additionally, when he examined alternative uh, means to treat CSOs, rather than coordinating, uh, coordinating our water bodies, we are asking to examine uh, methods such as ultraviolet filtration. Thank you to Environmental Chair Costa uh, Constantinidis for helping to advocate for these measures. Secondly, on the technology front, I'm grateful that we were able to advocate for the need to bridge the digital uh, literacy gap. This would inject funding for computers at our senior centers, including larger developments, and computer literacy programs for families and children. I look forward to working with you all to make sure this year's budget is a win for all New Yorkers. Thank you. Council Member Combo. Thank you. I rise today to show my support for the tremendous package of bills that were generated by both the City Council and the administration to put appropriate members in place to prevent and educate employees and employers, which is now included in the Stop Sexual Harassment in New York City Act. This is what women in leadership looks like. The month of April marks our annual nationwide campaign on sexual assault awareness, a time when survivors and advocacy groups work to raise awareness surrounding the pervasive issues of sexual violence and educate the public about ways to prevent it. I want to congratulate Speaker Corey Johnson and Women's Committee Chair Helen Rosenthal after only serving in this position for four months has created groundbreaking herstory that is vibrating all throughout New York City, this nation, and this world. You have answered a battle cry that women all over this world and men have booted and suited and taken to the streets to raise this very important issue that has impacted predominantly women for too long. The voices resonated through the Me Too and Time's Up movements, which struck a chord in all of us. Stop Sexual Harassment in New York City Act marks only the beginning of our efforts to strengthen anti-sexual harassment training and expand sexual harassment protection to all employees. The Stop Sexual Harassment in New York City Act is an opportunity to refine and introduce new practices that will foster a safer work environment for all New Yorkers in order to protect the workforce by enforcing human rights laws. As an advocate for women's rights and gender equality, I am proud to have worked closely on several bills within the Stop Sexual Harassment Act in New York City. And again, I can't thank Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, as well as Councilmembers Chin and Rivera for remarkable leadership after only a short time um, serving in their prospective positions. We have created her story today and something we can all be proud of. Thank you. Seeing none other. Report of special committees? None. Reports of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, intros 614A, 657A, 660A, and 663A, anti-sexual harassment package. Uh, amending and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, preconsidered intro 754, Nightlife Advisory Board. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, preconsidered reso 271, organization funding. Coupled on general orders. M30 and Reso 297, transfer of city funds. Coupled on general orders. M31 and Reso 298, appropriation of new revenues. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, intro 241B, establishing a charter revision commission. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU36, parking garage. Uh, approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.7B of the Rules of the Council <coughs> and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L LU 37 and Reso 299, Zoning Amendment. Coupled on General Orders. LU 38 and Reso 300, Sewer Overflow Control Facility. Coupled on General Orders. LU 41 and Reso 301, Tax Exemption. Coupled on General Orders. LU 42 and Reso 302, UDAP Manhattan. Coupled on General Orders. LU, sorry, LU 43 and Reso 303, Special Permit. Coupled on General Orders. LU 44 and Reso 304, Sidewalk Cafe. Uh, motion to disapprove. L LU 50 and Reso 305, TLC office space. Uh, coupled to be filed pursuant to a letter of withdrawal. 
Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, pre-considered Reso 272, Amendment of the Council Rules. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Women, intros 612A, 613A, 630A, 632A, 653A, and 664A, anti-sexual harassment package. Amended because of Helen Rosenthal and coupled to general orders. Intro 693, Division of Labor Services Reports. Couple to general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, Site Safety Training. A laid over. LU 36 and Reso 306, Parking Garage. Couple to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple to general orders, and I'd ask for a roll call vote on all items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers, please. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, Mr. Speaker, and my colleagues of the New York City Council for the opportunity to say a few words about the historical, unprecedented package of legislation that we, the members of the New York City Council, will vote on today. This vital legislation will place the mitigation of sexual harassment in the workplace front and center for all New York City agencies, and I am very proud, very proud, to have sponsored intro 613A, my first piece of legislation as part of this important package. <laughs> Under this bill, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services will be mandated to conduct an ongoing assessment of risk factors associated with workplace sexual harassment. The legislation will help provide a safe work environment for all city employees. By identifying these predictors and by reviewing current agency policies, each agency will be able to develop and implement an action plan that will mitigate the risk of workplace sexual harassment. The Me Too movement will not be forgotten, and every workplace should be free from sexual harassment. As a, city, as a city, we must enact effective laws to combat sexual harassment and lead the way by guaranteeing a safe workplace. And I am so proud that this council will indeed lead the way with implementation of this package. This legislation is just a first step. There is a lot more that needs to be done, but this bill will benefit countless New Yorkers. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for your insight and support. My courageous colleagues who sponsored and co-sponsored parts of this vital legislation and Council Member Helen Rosenthal for your tireless, stalwart leadership of the women of this council to bring groundbreaking legislation that will propel and fortify generations to come. Madam Public Advocate, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, yes. I'd like to, of course, congratulate Councilmember Adams on her first piece of legislation, as well as Councilmembers Rivera, Powers, and Ampri Samuel, all four passing their first bills as council members. And I'd like to give them all a big round of applause. Continuing the roll call. Ampri Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. As a member of the Women's Caucus, a mother, a daughter, a sister, a wife, and yet another woman with her own Me Too story, I was proud to sponsor my first piece of legislation in Intro 614A that will require the New York City Commission on Human Rights post information about sexual harassment policy and complaint procedure online for public access. This bill is quite simple, and it just makes sense. It's also an almost intriguing that such a bill is necessary in this day and time. Sexual harassment is a serious and is prevalent within the workplace, and while doing your job, in some cases, hoping to just make ends meet, or in other cases, focusing on climbing the career ladder, one should not have to also worry about sexual harassment. Taking it a step further, one should not be subjected to the humiliating process of seeking out resources generally posted in open and public places, in the employee break room, over the water cooler, in the corner of a kitchenette, the typical places where we find these items. 
But thankfully, now we live in a digital age where information is literally at our very own fingertips and available to people in an instant. This legislation affords victims the opportunity to speak privately and to an expert who has compassion for their situation versus an HR representative who may not be familiar with their process and helping to coach them along the way. It's an online 24-7 discreet process, discreet access. And so I am just, just privileged and proud to be able to introduce this legislation because again, it just makes sense. And I thank the speaker for this opportunity as well as Council Member Rosenthal for all of your hard work and dedication as well as my co-sponsors on 614A and I look forward to it passing and becoming law. Thank you. Congratulations. How do you vote, council member? I vote aye Thank on you. all. <laughs> Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I vote aye on all. Borelli. Congrats to the quartet. Uh, I vote aye on all except intro uh, 632 uh, and M30 and accompanying Reso 297. Brennan. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. Congratulations to all my colleagues on their important legislation. I proudly vote aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinides. Aye on all. Carnegie. I vote aye. Deutsch. I vote by Carnegie. Aye. <laughs> Diaz. Aye on all. Espinal. Aye on all. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Good afternoon to all of my colleagues. And I want to join with all of you in expressing my sincere gratitude to our speaker, Corey Johnson, to our chair of the Committee on Women, Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, and all of my dynamic sisters in the Women's Caucus, and all of my colleagues for really supporting a very comprehensive package to stop sexual harassment in New York City. And truly this act and this package of legislation that we're passing today reaffirms this body's commitment. Not only are we going to talk the talk, but we are going to walk the walk. And we are going to be doers of the word and hold ourselves accountable to higher standards of ensuring that all public servants are treated equally and fairly in a safe workplace and a safe environment. And while we've seen all of these movements and hashtags across the country and in society, certainly we never want to be reactionary, but we recognize the time and place and the purpose that we have as legislators and public servants. And so to all of the women and men out there that hear us, that don't think anyone cares, don't think that we're not doing anything, we hear you and we see you. And today's package of legislation reaffirms that commitment that we are going to make sure that city agencies as well as this city council holds itself to a higher level, level and standard of treatment and making sure that everyone is treated fairly in this society. So I am very proud of this city council. We have started on a very ambitious agenda in this term and I look forward to much more legislation and budget priorities that will come out of this council that relate to creating a safe workplace and environment for all public servants. So congratulations to all of my colleagues, certainly to all of my colleagues who are passing their first bill. We all remember that time and it's really a great honor and privilege and I am proud to vote aye on all. Congratulations. Thank you. Joan Aye. Aye on all. Thank you. Permission to explain my vote, Madam yes. Public Advocate. Thank yes, you. I want to congratulate uh, all those people who worked so hard to pass this package of bill um, to promote sexual equality and to stamp out um, the problems that women face in the workplace. I have worked for five elected officials in my career. Four of them were women. Uh, my mentors, uh, former Assemblywoman Nettie Mayerson, Borough President Claire Schulman, uh, the late great Helen Marshall, our former Borough President, the current Borough President Melinda Katz. And I never had to face that problem with any of them. And I hope that um, the people that work for the city of New York and the people that work in the city of New York, especially the women, uh, they should never have to go through that. On a lighter note, Madam Public Advocate, and I asked you this question before. You did. Nine in one, guys. Oh. 
Um, I want to congratulate you all. <laughs> to those going to Israel, uh, have a safe trip and come back to us soon. And with that, Madam Public Advocate, I vote aye on all. Thank you so much. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Congratulations to my colleagues, especially the uh, freshmen, for setting and perhaps shattering whatever records may have existed at 101 days to their first bills. I vote aye on all. King. Congratulations to everyone who passed that piece of legislation today to improve the city of New York, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ku. Uh, I vote aye on all. Kozlowitz. Can I please explain my vote? Yes. I want to thank the people that passed this legislation. This legislation is long overdue, years and years and years and years. I want to thank the speaker for allowing this legislation and supporting this legislation to happen today. And to Helen Rosenthal, you rock. I vote aye. Thank you. Lanceman. Aye. Levin. With congratulations to all of my colleagues, in particular Councilmember Chair Rosenthal, um, on this uh, very important uh, set of bills, I uh, proudly vote aye on all, uh, and congratulations. Thank you. Levine. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, permission to very briefly explain my vote. Yes. Well, I will, of course, be voting aye on all, and I just want to congratulate our speaker and our wonderful woman's chair who have prioritized uh, attacking the scourge of sexual harassment in our first major package of bills. And I want to say how pleased I am uh, to be the lead sponsor of uh, intro, uh, I should know this number by now, uh, 653A, which will bring to light the numbers that have eluded us as policymakers, that have eluded the press and the public. We don't know today how many incidents of sexual harassment occur in our vast municipal workforce. We need to know these numbers, and we will, thanks to this bill, that will require reporting on the number of complaints filed uh, related to sexual harassment, those that are resolved, uh, those that are substantiated, uh, and other important details that will shine a light on the terrible epidemic that has inspired the Me Too movement. Uh, I will be proudly be voting aye on all, and I am proud to be part of this incredible package today. Thank you. Thank you. Wiesel. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I also want to thank all uh, the new members of the council on their first pieces of legislation. Uh, I, I also just want to thank uh, council member Helen Rosenthal. She continues to, uh, I think, not only lead with inspiration, um, but she leads with consistency. And one of the things that she keeps on saying, and I want to say over and over again, uh, how important it is to have women in this on this body uh, and so I join her uh, and want to say how important it is that today women led and today not only did women lead uh, we need more women in the City Council uh, and so I'm gonna join her in making that happen I vote aye on all thank you Miller permission to explain yes First of all, I'd like to congratulate my colleagues on this comprehensive and unambiguous uh, legislation that was passed, being passed today. Um, and also, I'd like to remind everyone in the chambers here that 50 years ago today, 1968 Civil Rights Bill was signed, um, in particular around fair housing. And thank God for President Johnson and those that were in power in 1968. Certainly, we need it now. And with that, I vote aye on all. Moya. Aye on all. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Uh, aye on all, but permission to explain my vote? Yes. So um, first of all, I, I want to congratulate my, my colleagues as well on, on uh, 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 their new and first bills. And I'm very excited as well to be joining them in passing a first my first bill uh, related to sexual harassment. I want to thank the speaker, Councilmember Rosenthal, and all my colleagues for taking um, a, to make making history here today in the New York City Council to advance uh, additional protections for all employers in the city in the city and also to take a step to more make sure the city council itself 
uh, adheres to those same rules as well, which I think has been understated here but important. Um, so congratulations. Uh, I'd be remiss uh, to not mention uh, just the concerns I stated earlier with the budget modification, both from the school bus grant side, which I think I know a number of colleagues also share concerns about our continuation of that program, but also I want to say thank you to our chair of the Finance Committee, Danny Drum, and to the speaker for you know, shedding light on the idea that our budget process we can do better, getting a billion dollars handed to us uh, with, a, with, a, you know, with, a, with a yes or no vote, I think has real uh, implications for how we spend money in the city. And I think that the council has shown our willingness to look at the budget process and to do it differently. Uh, I just want to express my concerns, but with the individual items in there, also the process. And uh, it sounds like we have a commitment to do things differently, and I, I appreciate that. Hope my colleagues will join me uh, in those concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Reynoso. I'd like to vote aye on all with the exception of land use number 44 and resolution number 304, and congratulations to my colleagues. Thank you. Richards. I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you, Speaker Johnson and my colleagues for this big historic moment. My first bill, intro 660A. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> will strengthen the law because we should be at the front of this movement. Our city should be at the front of this movement. I joined the council because I know there are individuals who have remained in the shadows and survived experiences of sexual misconduct. I became co-chair of the Women's Caucus to push on tough issues related to equality. We owe it to New Yorkers to codify protections and make it clear that harassment is not welcomed here. Thank you all for your support. It's a big day. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Congratulations. Rodriguez. Aye. Thank you. Rose. Aye, and uh, congratulations to all my colleagues in the Women's Caucus for uh, this groundbreaking legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, Madam Chair. First of all, I want to say that um, I believe I've achieved my goal in life, so I'm not sure why I have to come to work anymore. Karen Koslowitz has said that I rock. <laughs> Thank you for that. That is a big deal. That, I don't think she's ever said that to anyone um, that I'm aware of, <laughs> except for Corey. Um, so I just want to say, uh, express my gratitude to all my colleagues um, for their enthusiasm, their willingness to dive in and get this done fast. Um, Speaker Johnson's 11 bill package, uh, the Stop Sexual Harassment in New York City Act, reflects his unwavering commitment to those who have bravely come forward in the Me Too movement. Let's be clear, this sweeping package of legislation, with this, we are not checking a box. Other localities, other states have been forced to pass some <laughs> bills, and they have, but all they've done is check the box. We're not doing that here today. That's thanks to everyone's participation, but specifically, I'd like to thank Tirza Nasser and her entire team who fought tirelessly to ensure that these bills were legal and they would be groundbreaking, and they are. Um, but be clear, this package of bills, this is just the beginning. We've taken the first baby step to righting this historical wrong, but there is more work to do. There's more work to do for specific industries and more work to do to make sure that women, uh, people who are disadvantaged in some way, people who 
don't always have a voice, people in the LGBT community, trans women, that they will be protected. That's what makes this so powerful. Um, and I, as I said earlier, when I came to Speaker Johnson after he um, uh, appointed me as chair of the Committee on Women, the first thing out of my mouth was, could we have our first hearing be about the sexual harassment in the workplace area issues? And he said, yeah, already thought about it, done. The legal staff is working on it. People are submitting bills left and right. You were a step in front of me. And I appreciate your commitment and your commitment to make sure these would be excellent bills, and they are. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, and I vote aye and all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Torres. Helen, you do rock, and I vote aye. Thank you. <laughs> Traeger. Uh, with congratulations to council members Rosenthal, Adams, Zampri Samuel, Rivera, Powers, and to Speaker Corey Johnson, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of M30 and accompanying Reso 297. Thank you. Vallone. I vote aye on all with the exception of M30 and accompanying Resolution 297, and congratulations to my colleagues on your first bills. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank the speaker for his very kind words about uh, all of the pieces of, of legislation here uh, and his, his very generous description of intro 693, a bill I'm very proud to uh, uh, sponsor as part of this incredible package. I want to recognize uh, the women who indeed have led uh, us through this incredibly important package, uh, most especially, of course, uh, Chair Rosenthal for her uh, steadfast work on this. Um, and I talked a little bit before at the preceded press conference about experiences that I had had as a young man in a nonprofit organization um, where my boss uh, started with uh, inappropriate comments, which led to inappropriate uh, touching and then even more inappropriate conduct, which led me to file a complaint uh, at only 20 years of age. Of course, those experiences are far more common uh, in women, uh, both in this body and in this room uh, and throughout society, have had to confront those issues, sometimes on a daily basis, for generations. Uh, it is about time, way past time, that we, all of us, uh, take a stand uh, to uh, eradicate uh, sexual harassment and end a culture where this kind of behavior is encouraged, uh, tolerated, and even pushed aside and hidden when it is uncovered. Uh, so it's incredibly important that all of these pieces of legislation begin the process of reckoning here in the city of New York, and I'm proud uh, to be a part of this package with all of my colleagues Intro 693 in particular, uh, as the speaker said, uh, amends the, the charter and requires uh, that the uh, reporting to the Division of Labor, uh, Service Employment uh, include for all contractors, subcontractors, those receiving funding, their practices, policies, and procedures as they relate to preventing and addressing sexual harassment. Uh, again, congratulations to all of my colleagues, particularly those who are passing their first piece of legislation. But again, this is historic, and I'm proud to be a part of this body. Thank you. Thank you. How do you vote? I vote aye and all. Thank you. <laughs> Williams. I have excuse me, my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, obviously, congratulations to uh, all the first timers. Um, and uh, thank the, the speaker for shepherding these pieces uh, so quickly. And a special shout out, of course, to the chair, uh, Councilmember Rosenthal, who uh, steadfastly moved everything through. Uh, with the Me Too movement and the, and the No More movement, as I mentioned downstairs, as a male trying to figure out what I can do to assist, realized the best thing to do were to uh, listen, to hear contently, and to believe, and try to be an ally wait, awaiting marching orders and what to do. Uh, it was also eye-opening as I spoke to uh, the women around me to realize that the things we were hearing on the news were not one-off stories, but it was a culture that was allowed to fester for far too long, uh, just being there in plain, hiding in plain sight. Uh, one of the best ways to be an ally was to do the best that I could uh, to add to 
fixing that culture. So I'm proud to be a co-prime sponsor to uh, 653, which uh, Councilmember Levine is the prime sponsor, uh, providing that research I think will help uh, bring some of these things to light. Uh, it's just uh, amazing to be a part of a body of that, as uh, the chairwoman mentioned, we not just check the box, we'll fundamentally do all that we can to change the structure. And uh, my hope is that the lesson here, there's uh, many, there were many signs that these things were going on and, and people did not do what we're doing now. And there's probably many signs of other things uh, that are culturally keeping people uh, feeling oppressed, their voice not feeling heard. Let's not wait uh, for another few decades to change those as well. With that, I'm very proud to vote aye on all. Thank you. Jaeger. I vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we speak often about that we want this council to be an equal branch of government, and uh, we, our colleagues here, my colleagues here, council members who came before us, have spoken about that, and for the last 30 years we've worked very hard, and those who came before me have worked very hard to make that happen. And on a day like today, when this council passed uh, a legendary, uh, I believe will be proven, uh, set of bills, and congratulations on that, I'm also concerned that we're passing a bill that I think will weaken the institution of the council. And we're passing a bill today that will appoint the Charter Revision Commission that will name 15 players to be named later, outsourcing the work that we were sent here to do, that I was sent here to do, to write laws for the city of New York. Now, we're outsourcing this work to 15 people who we don't know who they are, I don't know who they are, um, and I'm not prepared to uh, offer my vote in support of a commission that uh, outsources the work that I was sent here to do to an unelected and unrepresentative group. Now, to be very clear, this council has the right to amend the charter. In fact, we're doing so today. We voted on a bill. It's going to pass to amend the charter. This council, since January, has no fewer than 83 measures pending to amend the charter, sponsored by 30 members of this body, including Mr. Speaker, public advocates, so many of my colleagues who have very, very wise ideas about things that we should be doing within the Charter to make it a better document. And that's our job. That's what we were sent here to do. That's what I was sent here to do. Um, my concern is that we're also taking $2.3 million out of the taxpayers' pockets to pay for this Charter Revision Commission. $1.7 million in the budget that we voted on last week. I voted against it for many reasons, including this one. Uh, we voted on an $81 million budget for this council, an increase of $17 million, or 27%, above what this council had spent last year, which included $1.7 million uh, of, and a total of 2.3 for the Charter Revision Commission. I think we can do a lot better with that money. I think there are people in the city who need food. I think there are people in the city who need housing. I think there are people in the city who need jobs, who need training. I think we've proven in this council that NYCHA needs a lot of work. I think we've proven in this council that the police department needs resources, that our fire department needs resources, that our schools and our libraries need resources. But instead, we've chosen to take $2.3 million and put it into a charter revision commission. That is $1.2 million above what this council has budgeted to spend on its own legislative drafting team. We will spend a little over a million dollars on our own legislative drafting team. We will take $2.3 million and give it over to a Charter Revision Commission that will be doing the job that I was sent here to do. So I will be voting no, Madam President, on uh, intro 241B with great respect for my colleagues who have chosen to vote a different way, and I understand that tremendously. Uh, and I also vote no on LU38 and accompanying Resolution 300. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Matteo. I'm voting no on 632 and no on M30 with accompanying Reso 297 and I and the rest. Thank you. Combo. I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I again want to thank the staff here because the staff spent an enormous, enormous amount of time working on this package of bills. They looked at what was happening around the country. They engaged in real negotiations with the administration on the other side of City Hall. They have done so much work on this, as 
uh, Chair Rosenthal will tell you as she acknowledged them and thanked them. So I really just want to give another big round of applause to all the attorneys and policy analysts here who worked on this package of bills. If they could stand up, all the folks uh, sitting in the back who worked on these bills, it would be great uh, to acknowledge all of them. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank Peter Koo for wearing a leather jacket and sneakers uh, to City Hall here today. Uh, he is um, giving us all a new sense of style. Uh, and with that, this meeting of the council is now adjourned. Oh, no, 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 no. General, no. Don't we we've not got, general discussion? We've got, we've got a... Rezo? We've got our... we got a Rezo, okay. We have a resolution, we have general discussion, and we also have no to give... No one better want to talk. And we also Barry. have to give the results. Yeah. <laughs> All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of M30 and Resolution 297, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 632A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions, and uh, LU44, Resolution 303, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 241B, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative, zero abstentions, and LU38, and accompanying Resolution 300, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. And now, um, Mr. Speaker, introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. And now for the discussion of resolution, resolution 222, a resolution which reads, which reads as follows, a resolution calling upon the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign, Senate 2203 and um, H.R. 4734, known as the Ending Forced Arbitration of Sexual Harassment Act of 2017, which prohibits a pre-dispute arbitration agreement from being valid or enforceable if it requires arbitration of a sex discrimination dispute, uh, thinks Stormy Daniels. All of those in favor, say aye. Aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. And now to general discussion, beginning with Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Just want to talk briefly about Madiki Zela, whom most of you know as Winnie Mandela. She's known as the mother of the nation of South Africa. She was an elegant woman, an elegant an elegant woman, an eloquent speaker, and a fearless warrior. She's mainly known as the wife of Nelson Mandela, but in her own right, she was quite accomplished. She was trained as a social worker. She graduated at the top of her class and was offered a scholarship to come and study in the United States, but she turned it down and stayed with her people because they were engaged in a battle for their liberation. The system of apartheid had oppressed and suppressed and murdered many people and she became that spokesperson, the face and the voice of the ANC while her husband, Nelson Mandela, was incarcerated. At the Soweto uprising, uh, several hundred children gathered to protest the fact that they were being forced to learn their subjects in the language of the oppressor, and the 10-year-old Hector Peterson was killed at that time, along with several hundred other children who were protesting. She was an outstanding member of the African National Congress, and she endured many oppressive acts by that regime. She was held under house arrest. Her husband was in prison, as we know, for 27 years. She was separated from her children. She was banished to another county where they did not speak the same language. She was in prison, and yes, she was tortured. But she was an advocate for the, the, the disposed, the dispossessed, and the marginalized, and she was known as the voice of the people. And in her final days that she said that they needed to continue the work of returning the land to the people, and she said that work must continue because there were many shortfalls in that. Additionally, I just want to call my colleagues' attention to intro 742, which talks about access to bathrooms in those public facility, non-public areas of an agency, and also the justice system, which is a bill that says that those who are wrongly incarcerated and are vindicated should not have to pay any accumulated child support, but that, in fact, that should be a responsibility of the local government. And I want to thank my colleagues, Reynoso, 
and Espinal for co-sponsoring that bill, and also call your attention to Resolutions 269 and 270. Thank you. We want to thank Reverend Karen Dortry uh, for her event last night honoring Winnie Mandela and members of SASA. Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, colleagues, I want to call your attention to four bills I'm introducing today. Um, two bills seek to address the overcrowding in our city's public schools by improving the school siting process. Intro 759 would flag ULERP projects that meet certain requirements, including the lot size for SCA as possible school sites. Intro 757 would create a broad interagency task force on school siting, including members from DOE, SCA, DCP, EDC, HPD, and DCAS, as well as a representative on behalf of the City Council. SCA does tremendously good work, okay, but we yeah. certainly can agree on improvements when it comes to school siting. Many of our communities have a clear need for more schools, and we must be creative in our approach to address overcrowding in our city. Uh, in addition, I'm introducing intro 760, which increases the city's ability to track and monitor officers who are accused of wrongdoing. Currently, the CCRB, the Law Department, NYPD, and the Comptroller all take complaints from the public regarding police officer misconduct without an information sharing system. We're missing a valuable step in our efforts to address early warning signs of troubling behavior and limiting our ability to get those problem officers out of our communities. By creating this online information system run by the NYPD, we can improve public safety and do more to restore the public's faith. Finally, the last bill, intro 758, directs the Office of the Medical Examiner to check missing persons reports prior to a city burial for an unidentified person. This is really a common sense measure that has the potential to bring peace and closure to many families across our city. I believe it's important and necessary to direct the medical examiner's office to follow this protocol and ultimately codify it in law. And as I close on a personal note, I want to thank the speaker and all of my colleagues, Madam Public Advocate, for your thoughts and your prayers of condolence um, for my family and I as we mourn the loss of my aunt that passed a few days ago. So thank you so much for your love, your support, and I ask you to continue to keep us in prayer. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. She's in our thoughts and our prayers. Council Member Levine. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I'm pleased to be introducing a bill today that would require the Department of Education to report on foreign language education in our schools. You know, this is the most multilingual council in this body's history. Uh, we have colleagues who speak every language from Spanish to Russian to Creole to Yiddish uh, to Albanian and many others. And you all know the power of being bilingual and how it can change a person's life. Um, far too few of our young people are receiving that gift. And in part, it's because we teach foreign languages backwards in this city. Most children get no foreign language education until high school when it's too late to absorb it as a native speaker. Very, very, very few receive foreign language education in elementary school when it's easy to absorb a new language and achieve native speaker fluency. We need answers at uh, just how many children are receiving this vital instruction as a tool for pushing the DOE to do more. Thank you. Council Member Cabrera. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Public Advocate. Today I'm introducing two bills. The first, Intro 747, will prohibit any candidate for public office who have been convicted of certain felonies related to public corruption and fraud from receiving public matching funds. The second bill, Intro 748, is of critical importance to the thousands of people who make a living and support their family as livery drivers. This legislation seeks to alleviate the administrative and financial burdens imposed on livery drivers subject to oath hearings. Livery drivers are under extreme pressure from many sources. We have seen several suicides of livery drivers in recent months and in certain communities. The growing tension among drivers from unfair administrative and financial burdens related to uh, violation hearings threatens to reach a boiling point. The bill will impose certain procedure requirements on oath related to hearings on violations of TLC laws and regulations. It will require petitioners to appear in person or through a representative or remotely 
or remotely at a hearing, grant of administrative law judges and hearing officers discretion to reduce penalties in the interest of justice, require judges and hearing officers to dismiss a dupli duplicate notice of violations, which is a huge issue nowadays where they're getting double ticket, one from TLC and another ticket from uh, the NYPD. It's almost like double jeopardy here. Require that a hearing begin within three hours and prohibit TLC involvement in the appeal of oath penalty decision except for respondents' petitions to lower TLC penalties. Thank you so much. Thank you. Council Member Cumbo. Thank you, Public Advocate. I extend my condolences as well to the people of South Africa and all people throughout the diaspora, as well as those who recognize that their existence should not depend on the oppression of others, on the recent passing of freedom fighter Winnie Mandela. Many call the attainment of freedom the hallmark of every great nation. So it is in this spirit that I honor Winnie for her tireless efforts and deep devotion to ending one of the most brutal forms of government we have seen in apartheid and inspiring thousands to stand up and to fight for freedom against an oppressive and racist regime. The end result being a unique identity, basic human rights for all, and above all, peace and harmony. I was truly inspired by her efforts. She showed what revolutionary leadership looked like, and to be a woman inspired women all throughout the world. She endured brutality, torture, detainment, and so many other forms of brutality against her during her time, and never really quite receiving the credit for ending apartheid in South Africa. On January 23, 2018, we also last lost Hugh Masekela, a huge giant in the anti-apartheid movement who also spent three decades in exile. They are giants that have expressed leadership that we do not know often. They were brutalized, tortured, many of them spending years, such as Nelson Mandela, in prison for over 27 years. I also want to note in the diaspora, in just a few short days, 17 days approximately, 112 of our Chibok girls would have been in Boko Haram captivity for four years. It is important that we continue to remember them. And I also, at this time, want to bring attention and that we recognize Saheed Vassal. Saheed Vassal uh, was shot and killed, uh, unfortunately, on the border of my district, as well as uh, Councilmember Alika Samuels. And I want to thank her for her leadership, because we have to continue to do more to fight, to work together, to come up with greater solutions, to challenge our entire system, to make sure that we work together to protect those that have mental challenges within our community. We have to work together to make sure that we create safe environments so that we can protect those who have mental challenges in our community. My heart goes out to the Vassal community, and I hope that we as a council continue to find uh, solutions to make sure that the, the Sahids of our community are protected and safe and given all the resources that they can to lead productive and happy lives. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Powers. And thank you, Mem thank you, Councilmember Cumbo. I will be quickly not to ruin a, a great picture ahead. Um, I am introducing a resolution today to ask the federal government to eliminate the question around citizenship on the 2020 census. I'd ask all my colleagues to join in supporting that. Uh, second, I've introduced a package of legislation around the campaign finance program, and um, which would make it, I think, a little bit easier for people to run for office, and similarly would ask people to sign on. I want to thank Councilmember Ayala, Kalos, Lander, Holden, and I think there's somebody I missed, uh, for signing on as, as uh, co-sponsors to that legislation as well. Thank you. Councilmember Rose, you want to use that microphone as well? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Community Mike. I want to ask my uh, colleagues to support a bill um, today, pre-considered intro 784. It requires, um, beginning in January 2019, that the NYPD use evidence-based staffing for its SVD, Special Victims Division, and report SVD staffing levels to the council and the mayor with the number of cases, officers, and investigative hours 
disaggregated by borough and unit, and where applicable, disaggregated by the charged office and severity of offense and rank of officers. In the event of Me Too, when women and men are coming forward to share stories of past incidents of sexual abuse, and with a new campaign by the NYPD encouraging people to report incidents of sexual abuse, it is critically important that we have appropriate staffing levels. In a recently released re report by the DOE, DOI on adult sex crimes, it was revealed that while most crimes in New York City are reported to the police over 70% of the time, sexual assaults, assaults are reported only 5 to 20% of the time. There are many reasons why this happens, one of which is which may be that once reported, victims often see no results as cases languish without resolution because SVD um, units are understaffed and um, S um, preconsidered 784 will facilitate the process by which this imbalance will be addressed, ensuring swift and thorough investigations of these heinous crimes. And my other bill is 783, and it just requires reflective materials on garbage containers and things that obstruct the road to make it easier for drivers to see them in the street. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Williams, same mic. <laughs> Thank you. I want to associate myself with the comments around uh, William Mandela that uh, Councilmember Barron and Councilmember Cumbo made. Uh, of course, uh, uh, own lead in her own right, without which the leadership we would not have what we, the success we had in apartheid, and of course add uh, Linda Brown's name uh, to the fact that black women have been leading the struggles uh, and not getting the respect they deserve, and I'm thankful that's happening. Today I introduced three pieces of legislation, intro 821, and eight, intro 820, and resolution 296A, uh, co-sponsored by myself, Amphrey Samuels, and uh, Council Member Reynoso, related to the over-strict penalties that we impose related to marijuana usage and possession. The first prohibits the Taxi and Limousine Commission from using low-level marijuana offenses as the sole reason for license suspension or denying an application for a license. The second prohibits the Sanitation Commission from using those low-level offenses as a sole reason to dis discipline a member of the uniform first. The third, a resolution calls on NYCHA to not use these low-level offenses as a sole grounds to remove a tenant. I want to thank again Council Members Amprey Samuels and Minoso for their co-prime sponsorship. Lives should not be ruined because based on the over penalization of these low-level offenses, we're in the middle of a movement that rethinks the way marijuana is characterized and marijuana offenses are reacted to. And in the midst of this moment, low-level offenders are paying dis disproportionate prices. Also want to add uh, just uh, add uh, to what the Council Member Combo was saying about uh, Saheed Vassal and thank her and Council Member Amprey Samuels for their leadership. The question around it being a justified shooting, I believe, is the wrong question. That bar is very low. It'll probably pass that bar. The question is whether or not the shooting is be, could have been prevented. Uh, and I think there are a lot of issues there from what the officers were told based on the 911 calls to the services that should have been provided well before. Uh, to that end, this body actually asked for a task force to be created or reconstituted uh, when Dwayne June was shot in my district about seven months ago, the Progressive Caucus, the Black Latino Agent Caucus, uh, and uh, Council Member uh, Andy Cohen, who then led the Mental Health Committee. Uh, after saying no, the mayor said yes. Uh, we're still waiting for that committee. I want to thank the current chair of the Public Safety Committee, uh, Council Member Richards, uh, for asking for it again. My hope is that we can finally get it. We should be able to look the families in the eye and honestly saying we're doing everything we can. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Great segue, because mental illness should not be a crime. Council Member Richards. Uh, sorry, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, first acknowledge, uh, I just came from a funeral of a three-year-old, Bella Edwards, who unfortunately was murdered uh, by her stepfather. Yeah. And uh, I want the family to know that we continue to pray for her and that this body is certainly thinking of them uh, as well. Um, I also want to call your attention to two bills I'm introducing today. Earlier this year, the Department of Corrections announced its plans to increase the number of personnel equipped with tasers from 25 to 154. We should be using every tool in our disposal to limit attacks on our corrections officers and emergency service workers, but at the same time, we should be keeping a close eye on the use of electric shock devices in our jails to ensure this increased use doesn't result in increased abuse. Intro 779 
would require the Department of Corrections to report on their officers use of tasers and provide the public with the necessary transparency that should come along with it in any use of force by law enforcement. I want to thank Keith Powers for co-sponsoring as well. Chair uh, Powers. My next piece of legislation is a response to a tragedy that occurred in the Rockaways in January when a fire broke out in Ethel Davis building. NYPD officers bravely responded to the call and attempted to evacuate the building. Unfortunately, this heroic act ended in tragedy. Ethel's building was fireproof and her apartment was the safest place for her. These officers had the best intentions, but they did not have the expertise to respond to the situation in the way the FD FDNY would. While we would never want the NYPD to take on the responsibilities and complete training of the fire department, we are also aware that they instinctively respond to emergencies in all situations. Intro 778 would require basic fire safety training for NYPD officers, which would include when to engage in active fire incidents. I ask my colleagues to join in supporting these two pieces of legislation. Thank you. Last but not least, Councilmember Holden. Last but not least, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I too want to congratulate Councilman Keith Powers on the uh, campaign financing legislation, which made it easier for first time candidates and grassroots candidates to run for office. I know every one of us who've uh, taken on the machines, the big machines, uh, can attest to that the hardest part about running was the fundraising and the campaign filings. I want to congratulate Keith again for a great job. It's uh, going to encourage more people to run for office. and. Thanks again. Thank you. And the speaker to close. Uh, does anyone else want to speak? <laughs> uh, Madam Public Advocate, do you want to give a speech? Uh, uh, any sergeant at arms want to speak? To the... Peter, you want to close us out? No, we're done. <laughs> this meeting's adjourned. Goodbye. <laughs>